Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the Xena Thesis podcast. Uh, this uh, episode we're covering chapter 12 from part 3, Nursery of uh, Book 1, Dawn of Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis trilogy. Uh, I'm joined as always uh, by my co-host who is uh, here perhaps against his will but he's lightly drugged out to make up for it. <laughs> yes, possibly. Michael Glinker, hi everyone. Oh, to be honest, I'm I'm very curious about what the drug they used in the in the chapter to make them sort of relax but happy and content with like I guess it was weed, mm. just basically, you know, uh <laughs> weed brownies like no, just uh Yeah, just a little uh, THC. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Just chill, <laughs> complete chill. Yeah, so it, it's a, a, an interesting chapter, quite a long chapter. It is. But to be honest, I think like, you know, I, I've been reading this chapter mm-hmm. and I was thinking to myself, why did the Onkali not do it from the beginning, right? Like wake up 40 people, right? Then just uh, get Lilith, be like, okay, this is what the situation is. Drug them up. The Onkali walk in. Hi, hi. See, I was telling the truth. One day's journey. No problems. Nobody trying to rape anyone. Nobody trying to do anything. No problems to Lilith. Nobody, no fighting or anything. Just let's get to it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it is an interesting one. And it, it, I mean, I suppose the um, one can appeal to the apparently they've done this a few times and this is the way that they found worked. This is the way. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I've been watching um, The Mandalorian as well. So. <laughs> yes, uh, me too. So. Oh really? Okay, we'll have to chat later about it. <laughs> yeah, I think I don't know. Perhaps there's some something they're trying to achieve with having established the the relationships between the individuals in this context in in whatever their next step is, where it makes sense for them to have interacted th- before they're subjected to this. I, I don't know. I think you're right in here in this point because later on, actually, you can't say to Lilith that it's easier to um it's it's conversation between Nikanj and Joseph about like you know Joseph being scared of him but actually he's not being that scary it's just his the aliens are so different that that's why it scares them and Nikanj mm-hmm. says oh because it's so different you know it's so um uh you know difference can be different can be scary but mm-hmm. it's easier to cope with it as an individual than when you're in a group and i think that's the reason why when they were like pairing them like when people pair themselves up in a way it's easier for the Onkali to deal with that because they can sort of, one, deal with their scariness and difference in um, being, you know, in pairs, because they also, you know, kill two birds mm. with one stone, and as well as, you know, like, um, it reduces the amount of Onkali being involved as well as they can, it's easier for them to co- um, convince them, I would say. So I think there okay. is something and makes sense in it, and actually the chapter does speak about it, so. We're getting a little... Out of Ahead order. Of, so yes. let's um, let's talk about your your predictions for this chapter before we. Yes, sorry for that. Um, so my chapter twelve predictions. So I thought there's gonna be another problem that either Peter or some other second in command will start causing some problems uh, after what happened to Peter and the rest of uh, the group, um, and with the final ten people being awakened, the Onkali will finally reveal themselves. That was my these were my predictions. Okay. Well I mean the the Onkali revealed themselves. I think we got the last ten people. Um yeah. we didn't get that much more trouble. It wasn't really time. No. But uh, yeah, a little no. bit of political realigning in the in Peter's group. As it always happens, right? Hmm. Uh, right, so let's get to it. I guess you know it's a chapter twelve summary, mm-hmm. because uh, I think we're I, I'm, we're both excited to talk about the conversation earlier. So let's let's maybe get to there. Mm-hmm. So chapter twelve summary, everyone. Um, it's the chapter starts with description of sort of the atmosphere in the the cell, the containment where the humans are. You know, people. Some people are avoiding Lilith because they were basically afraid of her after she basically destroyed five grown men like it's nothing um you know people thinking like is she human or is she not human but on the other hand some people are like we were like oh you know she's strong she can beat up a lot of people and you know let's let's join her side so 
makes sense. It's it started you know the group started sort of shift, and I guess the neutral group that we discussed last week, you know, it sort of started dissipating into either or. Yeah, uh, as is usual, if, uh, can't maintain the neutrality for too long. The two camps. Yeah. Like an attractor state of some kind. Especially <laughs> if one group just shows how powerful they are. So. Hmm. Um, but you know, overall, like we are told that the Lilith's core group did not change, but as mentioned earlier, like one of the, there was some sh- political shift. So, and the Peter's group changed. So we have Victor, uh, uh, you know, joined that group cause he was strong and quite charismatic. And then Kurt replaced Peter as the leader because, uh, one, Kurt is bigger, stronger, and seems a bit more smarter than him. And mm. also Peter was in pain because his arm was broken. So he was not like, he was just basically like a beaten up puppy sitting in a corner and didn't want to get involved in anything. Um, yeah. But we're told that it only lasted two days. So Don Kali made him suffer for two days. And after that, they, uh, on the night of the second uh, day, he was healed. And so when he woke up, you know, it, everyone was like, he was like, what the hell? And everybody was like, okay, there's some serious stuff going and nobody could refuse that there's some other force that was basically in in uh, in charge yeah so he kind of emerges from his room looking extremely shaken and with a perfectly functional arm after having previously had like it's shattered a very it's... obviously broken arm yeah uh so yeah i imagine that would be a bit disconcerting <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i can imagine being like freaking ass like suddenly waking up with no pain and just like a dream basically yeah the, the, this is the thing like right because uh in here we have told that like on the following on the day of the on the following lunch on the day when he was healed Liv just went on to tell about more stories about her like experience with don Kali. a bit censored but you know most of it uh but he still refused to listen and then mm. after you know Lilith giving you know talking to people she went to speak to him and basically said you know just don't make anything stupid, you know, it's like sanity is what we needed and Don Kali healed him and all this trouble that ever happened to him was because he caused it, like he's the only one to blame and, you know, I guess he's just mopping around at the moment just uh, because uh, he was proven wrong over and over again and now, mm-hmm. you know, he can't really refute her. Yeah, I think he does like express his, his gratitude to the own Kali for healing his arm um but is still i think it's more like sarcastic oh yeah i'm very like grateful to them why don't you tell them you know like yeah yeah i wasn't i wasn't sure to read that sarcastically or not but it was just yeah uh, he, i he think seems... it was sarcastic in my opinion like it, it, he yeah. was like yeah okay cool hmm. thanks yeah he still seems very um opposed to to any involvement uh with uh, uh, whatever the the plan the Owen Carly has for them, which I suppose uh, yeah, makes like it, it makes sense that he's not on board with the plan, but at the same time, it's like that uh, you're not really in a position to not be on board with the plan. Yeah, but <laughs> I, it feels to me that he might do actually something really stupid at some point. Hmm. I don't know. It just feels to me like he's he's been proven wrong, and sometimes when people are pushed against the wall, when everybody's like you know. He's being proven wrong and he's like, you know, it's, I feel like he's one of those people that you sometimes see in like um, situations where they were proven like completely wrong and, you know, things were like, um, uh, go against them. And then they, they just, just get more and more stubborn. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to dig in and not. Yeah. He's uh, going to dig his heels in change. and be like, hmm. no, this is not like uh this i don't like this and then basically he will do something i hope not something silly basically Mm. so but let's see but you know overall we know that in total there were 43 people being awakened and so the onkali could appear in any time and we are told that after the fifth day of peter's healing um everybody's meal uh, was dragged and the onkali started going coming through so mm-hmm. Lilith um so as everybody is having you know breakfast or whatever meal they were having um Lilith only realized that the food is dry because she started feeling this sort of growing relaxation similar to um when Nikanj 
uh, was making the neural link with her. And this is what the book says. And the sweet fog of anticipation dissipated. Her, se- her body seemed to shrug it off and she was alert again. Nearby, other people still spoke to one another, laughing a little more than they had before. Laughter had never been, uh, never quite disappeared from the group, though at times it had been rare. There had been more fighting, more bed hopping, and less laughter for, uh, for the past few days. Uh, basically, people started becoming more and more friendly to each other and relaxing. Yeah. No one else seems to have noticed that they're being kind of I don't know, drugged. It's just Lilith who kind of, you know, she recognizes it as something that she's experienced before. Yeah. But everyone else is just kind of feeling kind of chill. Yes, basically relaxing. And that's the thing. But but then again, she then goes to Joseph and like he is already sort of like, you know, getting under influence of a drug but when she sort of shake, shakes him he like he realizes that oh actually there was some i realized that he he felt that something was going wrong and then um suddenly you know as they're having this conversation joseph points out at the walls and you know because suddenly eight doors appear and then kali started coming through and like and the book mm-hmm. says like oh no joseph said stiffening looking away why didn't you leave me comfortably dragged but unfortunately for him, Lilith tells yeah. him, you know, he was also modified, so the drug effect wouldn't last long. Yeah, I think they um, now just like metabolize whatever this is faster. Yeah. So it's, you know, they're not really as susceptible to it. Yeah. So um, I can imagine, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, part of the quick regeneration means that they also have a higher metabolism for anything. So uh, food and I guess any toxins that uh, go possibly. through their body. So. Mm-hmm. Way back towards the beginning, I think the uh, Matt Binchdier talked about that, you know they basically can't poison the Owen Kali because they'll figure out how to digest it. Yeah. Uh, so I think they have some of that same property now. Although there are so there is like some some things can be poisonous, but Daya didn't really um, go into more details. But mm. there are some things I think still poisonous for to um, the Owen Kali. I remember there was in one of the chapters. Um, uh, it was the chapter when um, Lilith went to investigate the Japanese fellow and she had some mm-hmm. oranges and then she started eating uh, them and she dropped, the, she dug the peels into the, the ground and then suddenly like the ship started reacting really weirdly to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So then Kagoya came in and was like, oh yeah, you finally found something poisonous. And it's like, mm. okay. So, but there is something, something there, possibly. Yeah, I think the the, the impression was that um, that was basically because the area yes, she put yes, the orange yes, didn't it was know different. about oranges, yes. right? So it's as long as the Oankali have some kind of forewarning and they're not like weakened, then they'll probably be okay, even if if it's something that would otherwise be a problem. Absolutely. Yes, but going back to the chapter, now we have the people's favorite. Kaguya being back mm-hmm. in the action. So we are told that an Oloi go that go where goes straight to Gabriel and Tate and um Lilith recognizes, oh it's actually Kaguya. And it seems that he, it is very interested in the duo. Um because it's like it was trying to coy them, you know, like Ton Lilith describes is associated with Nikanj. Um, hmm. In the meantime, as this was happening, if there was some fighting breaking up, for example, Kurt, in spite of the drag, managing to attacking Deoloi that was approaching him, but, you know, obviously Deoloi managed to put him un- unconscious. And important to note, as the book describes, that all the Onkali present in the room were the Uloi. But, you know, unfortunately mm-hmm. for the humans, the Onkali did not tolerate any fighting or running away. So, uh, and everyone who did any of those two was basically pacified straight away. Yeah, just sort of grabbed and either like held or rendered unconscious, yep. seems to yep. be. Mm. And from Lilith's main group, Tate and Gabriel, of course, were awake and talking, being talked to by Kaguya. Leah was awake, but her partner, Ray, was unconscious, but the Ulu was calming her down, that you know, probably assuring her that uh, he will be fine. Um, some of the humans, we're told, were awake, some were down. Celine was awake and frozen in place, and when the Ulu touched her, it just sort of moved away straight away because as, as if like pain it jerked away instantly as in pain but while Celine fainted so I wonder what that's mm-hmm. going on 
Yeah, that's an interesting response because it, it seems like she just kind of like uh, passed out because she was overwhelmed by what was going on. But yeah, the fact that the Uloi was just sort of like uh, surprised by that. Maybe, maybe like the, the sheer panic, like in her body, her body was just going like hormones and adrenaline mm. was so going haywire that the Uloi was not ready for such a like um uh biochemical Maybe. you know cocktail hitting it so yeah it could easily be especially if it's doing the whole kind of attempt at like feeling what people yes, feel yes. thing that they can do with their nervous system and probably get a, a bit of an overwhelming stimulus i i guess probably it was that i wonder mm. if i don't think it probably didn't have time to actually read her mind to um to no. to I don't know access some memories maybe that but I think it's more biochemical response. Um, mm-hmm. Some people were trying to fight on Kali, like for example, Alison was throwing, tried to throw her, her foot at them, but when she was grabbed, she like calmed down almost instant instantly, like she instantaneously she was like frozen in place, but she didn't she wasn't put uh, to sleep. But overall. Any chaos that could be caused by uh, humans was contained in a strange peace and quietness game. Um, but we're back in, to Kaguya and Tate with uh, Tate and Gabriel. So the book says this following. The Ulu was sitting down, facing them, talking to them, even giving them time to stare at the way its joints bent and at the way its sensory tentacles followed movement. When it moved, it moved very slowly. When it spoke, Liv could hear none of the hectoring contempt or amused tolerance that she was used to. <laughs> you know that one? Joseph asked. Yes, it's one of the Kanji's parents. I never got along with it. Across the room, Kaguya had tentacles swept in her direction for a moment, and sh- she knew it had uh, had hurt. She considered saying more, giving it an earful, figuratively. Uh, I find it funny, <laughs> to be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, there the kind of a, remains a certain uh, dislike and tension between Lilith yeah. and Kaguya that uh, I'll be like, you know, both seem to acknowledge. I'll be like, yeah, I know this asshole. This is you know any kind of uh, uh, parent, <laughs> but I fucking hate him. Um, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lilith is a bit more diplomatic. Yeah, it seems about like it. yeah, she's way more diplomatic <laughs> about it. Um, mm, uh, yeah, so it's it's an interesting, so we, quite a sudden change of situation, right? So ev- everyone suddenly rendered somewhat impassive, a little bit docile, and then these all these Uloi have shown up, um, basically like uh, you know one for every two humans, pretty yes. much. Or, or yes, was yes, it, um, uh, it was. Yes, yeah, so yep. about that, right? Yeah, and I think it was only eight, right? No, eight doors were open, but like oh, around doors. Um, yeah, yeah. twenty mm. or something, uh, twenty-eight or something, Oloi came through. So yeah, so that, that fits about with yeah. Well, so one for every two humans or so. Uh, so it seems like the pairing off thing was something that they were planning yes. on. Um, and yeah, so it, it's interesting because it, uh, you would expect kind of more panic, but the drugs seem to render that less. Uh, Less the immediate response. Yeah. Basically, crowd control by the Onkali. You drag them up and then hmm. hit in and hit them hard and fast uh, when they're separated because this way it's easier to pacify everyone. Really good, mm-hmm. good, yeah. good crowd control uh, planning, I have to say. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, it reminds me of, um, I think there's, there's a sequence in, in Aldous Huxley's classic uh, the dystopian novel, uh-huh. um, Brave New World, where and a bunch of the like lower caste individuals get distressed about something or other. So there's like a mist of the drug soma that they use to calm everyone yeah. down. That's just like sprayed across a, a room. That's, that sounds yeah, familiar. I, that... um, I think it was. I've heard from like I I heard this particular also sort of method was also used other places like under fiction, but. Um, hmm. I can't think of them. Yeah, there's quite a lot of instances in fiction where kind of a, an, a um, like a a mist of drugs is sprayed yeah. into a room. Yeah. But I mean, uh, Huxley was ahead of his time because he wrote that in like 31. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Going back to the chapter, um, hmm. before any co- further conversation could t- play could take place about Kaguya, uh, Nikanj arrives, checking up on them, and not really, you know confirming everyone is fine um kind of directs the conversation towards the room and says that tate and gabriel will probably won't be fine 
Tate will probably survive, but Gabriel won't. Um, this is the book, what the book says. You can't rustle its tentacles. Kaguya will try. I warned it, and I, it admits I have talent for humans, but it wants them badly. The woman will sur survive, but the man may not. And when asked why again by Lilith, Nikant tells us that he may decide not to continue living. So, you know, basically committing suicide. Hmm. Yeah, this is an, an interesting point because I was kind of taken by uh, surprise by this little bit here because it seems well, it's very matter of fact, right? Nikant just sort of comes in and says, yeah, he, he might not survive the process. And it's a little sort of vague as to why exactly. But, uh, yeah, because this says, this is what you know the book goes further about this. You know, Joseph also like was like scared, like hearing all that. You know, as if Nikanch can mm. foretell the future, and we are told that indirectly he might, but Kaguya will try to uh, indirectly he might, as in um, Gabriel might, you know. Uh, try to kill himself, but Kaguya will try to uh, his best to save him. But considering Gabriel's past behaviors, it might be very difficult. So, hmm. considering the fact that um, whatever happened whenever Gabriel was being um, kept in that solitude, at the time when the hmm. Onkali were probing him, you know, when you know, just a vo uh, body less voice were coming from the walls i guess you know when he was trying to pretend to be different you know characters because he's an actor i guess they mm. sense something that he might actually do and so if something you know like this happens yeah it seems their their assessment is that um whatever they're about to subject him to might cause him to want to kill himself it's mm. it's interesting how how but mm. to be honest i would trust nikanj more than kaguya because nikanj has mm. shown Definitely. over time that he can be rely he can rely you can rely on his opinion, and he understands it really well. He seems to be much better at reading humans, which is you know what what you'd expect because, and, and as it says, you know, it, uh, Kaguya respects its it, uh, sort of talent for humans, as it says, and it is it is bred for that purpose. So, well, I mean, you know, um, it's Nikanj underwent the whole growing up metamorphosis, going from his teenage to adult times with Lilith, and I guess. Hmm. I guess, you know, that also helped. But overall, I think Nikanj is much better um, than mm -hmm. what Kaguya ever will be. I think so. Yeah. In, at least in terms... Yeah, which is presumably why they actually breed for yes. it, right? Because they, they, they assume that whatever plasticity they have as, as adults is not enough to, to learn the ability to be a good interface to the new species. Mm -hmm. I just sort of try to imagine, like, you know, because Kaguya said to Lilith one, uh, once that she will never understand Don Kali, but her offspring will, obviously, because the um, children that Lilith will have will be sort of a hybrid of a alien and humans, right, more or less. So I guess, you know, um, it's... But the reason why I'm saying is that is because, like, you know, maybe actually it's not true. Like, you know, Lilith would understand Don Kali if... Um, you know, she was she didn't have experience of Kaguya at the very beginning. But I guess it also relates to the <laughs> fact that the children, the offsprings, will have also the abilities, the, some of the abilities that the Onkali have, like you know, mm. editing mm. and understanding the genome and stuff like that. So I guess you know they will understand the stuff. But anyway, yeah, it's, it seems like there there are some sort of perceptual faculties that the Onkali have that they can't really confer on an adult organism which i think fits fairly well with what we understand of neurobiology right it's it's, it's tricky to acquire new capabilities as as you get older oh yes a hundred percent true people who have uh, like relatively uh, the, the younger you are when you have some kind of like traumatic brain injury or whatever the, the more likely you are to be able to kind of you know co-opt some other part of your brain to perform yes. that function and relearn whatever yeah. it was you lost no absolutely absolutely i can tell from experience me trying to learn a new language is just i <laughs> wish i had the brain i had when i was a kid when i was just a little sponge absorbing everything yep. <sighs> yeah especially for language acquisition yeah. actually that's like one of the one of the major ones particular developmental phase where it's just uh that seems to be the point where we're really good at acquiring languages but let's go back to the chapter i guess hmm. 
Nikan sort of tired of the questioning about you know, the Tate and Gabriel notices that actually Joseph in the panic when you know he's uh, he heard um, all that information about them he was harming himself like he was basically gouging his fingernails into his own arm and basically grabs him and tranquilizes him while gently speaking to him that it won't hurt him right and after the second sort of the drug or whatever the drug that Nikan injected into Joseph Joseph, it goes through now relates to the conversation we had at the very beginning that Joseph doesn't understand why he's mm. so scared of the Onkali because they're not scared, it's just very different. And but the Kanch tells him that different is threatening to most species. And you can, uh, he answers, different in not, different is dangerous. It might kill you. That was true to your animal ancestors and your near animal relatives, and it's true for you. Uh, mm. And that's why the Onkali are handling the humans pair by pair because it's easier to handle the different as an individual as compared to a group. So it makes sense, you know, like mm. if there's anything that if you want anybody to get used to something, it's better to deal, uh, help them deal individually versus trying to help them deal with the group. And it's also why I'm a bit confused, okay? Because um, mm-hmm. in this sentence, they literally don't Kali tell them that, oh, it's easier to deal with the different when they're an in the individual, right? So well, Lilith waking up the 40 people hmm. is the opposite of yeah, that. Yeah, it does seem a little contradictory. Yeah. Because it, and they are still kind of, they're in a the same room, effectively, right? They're, they're all in the same space. Yes. They're just, I mean, they're, they're paired off, but they are still kind of in a... Um, a social environment, as it were, but uh, I mean, maybe that is actually partially helpful because I mean, if you're seeing other humans sort of accept the situation, that will also help you to accept mm-hmm. it, right? Because the the whole like social knowledge thing, right? If 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 you if you see that other people are doing it, then you're more likely to think yeah, yeah. right because it's it, it, so that um i think that might be a maybe they're trying to exploit that to some degree here but they're they're kind of getting the best of both of like the individual component and then also some uh some people to kind of be serving as an example i don't know but it just feels to me like this this just particular sentence just contradicts of everything what lilith was doing right instead of having lilith to go to the group and saying oh this is what's happening Instead of just basically, you know, a non-Kali, appear, one non-Kali appearing every two humans, right? So every time she awakens someone, another non-Kali appears. That would mm. probably just solve the pro- issue, right? Like each time it's like, oh, there's more and more and more. And people would get used to that, like that many people, like, you know, an alienness. Uh, perhaps, yeah. I mean, the the prolonged presence of the non-Kali, I imagine, would be a bit uh, too different to get used to than just seeing them kind of... Over the short but then again, term. this is what Lilith experienced with Chitaya, like you know, Chitaya not leaving her. So true. true. Um, but this mm. is actually what um, what the, you know, the, actually Nikant explains this to Lilith because he's just like mm-hmm. yeah, they, they point this um, out where you know Nikant then tells um, Lilith that it would be easier for Lilith to be handled the same way, you know, dragged with an adult Uloi. But Chitaya believed that it's the better way and it, that it uh, the way it was done originally. And Lilith says that she wouldn't want to go through anything like that again, you know. And she kind of goes, you won't. Look at your friend Tate. And we see that Tate is actually trying to touch Kaguya on her own, uh, as from her own choice. But Gabriel stops her, and after a short argument, she tries again. And then Kaguya takes the initiative and wraps its tentacle around her arm. And, you know, Tate doesn't even blink, you know. She's, she's, uh, she's pretty brave. And um, hmm. Lilith comments that she wouldn't be able to do it like Tate did work. Nikanj comments that that Chitaya made her do all the work. So, you know, mm. Lilith was the one to do all the everything, you know, the first steps, the touch and everything. Whereas here they basically drug people, make them talk and then take the initiative. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting contrast. It's a little unclear still to me why exactly it is that they chose to do it in those two different ways. I suppose it uh, must be something to do with what they wanted Lilith to do yeah. right, they they needed someone who would be more, um, okay, almost more on on their side, as it were, or more, um, more cognizant of what they're actually trying to do, and able to kind of help out in that 
endeavor mm-hmm. even well even if she's not necessarily kind of on board in the long run but at the least have her see the necessity of cooperating yeah. in the in the now yeah um whereas you might not get that same uh thing from the people whom you've done it in this kind of drugged approach yes, yes. And, yeah yeah but you know it seems that it's um mm-hmm. working for at least some of the people so mm. But this is uh, where I think the chapter goes gets really interesting because um, Joseph then asks what will happen and the Uloi responds that they will stay together with them for several days and once everybody's used to them, they'll move into the training forest that Lilith will spend one year in. Hmm. Uh, and in the meantime, Lilith can relax because she won't have any duties and she could take Joseph around the ship. Um Lilith looked. At, this is where the book says because I, I I think I need to quote this book here because it's um it's an interesting uh, conversation and explaining sort of what what's going to what what's happening and why um she is not responsible she she won't have to do anything. So Lilith looked around the room. Yeah. There were no more struggles, no manifest of terror. Um, people who could not control themselves were unconscious. Others were totally focused on their uh, alloy and suffering through the confused combination of fear and drug induced well being. I'm the only human who has any idea what's going on, she said. Some of them might want to talk to me. Silence. Yeah, what about it, Joe? Want to look around outside? He frowned. What What just <laughs> didn't get said? She sighed. The humans here aren't going to want us near them for a while. In fact, you may not want them near you. It's a reaction to the Uloi drugs. So we can stay here and be ignored while we can go outside. So this is sort of confuses <clears throat> me. It initially confused me in a way because it says that humans here aren't going to want us near them for a while. In fact, you may not want them near you. It's a reaction to the Uloi drug. So we can stay here or be ignored uh, or can we can go outside. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, maybe you can clarify this to me a bit more, but like, is this sort of related to um, the fact that when partner they like when they partner they don't want to spend the time with other only they will feel like um i remember when there was it in one of the chapters mm. they were talking like that um when nikanj was sort of imprinting in a way during his metamorphosis uh on um lilith they, yes. they said she said that any presence of any other Oloi or Onkali may feel like disgusting or something she may actually almost die if she's in presence of the other yeah i th- I think that's it because it was the uh, um, her. I think it might have been Kanguyat, right? Because yeah, because her another Uloi after she's kind of like imprinted on one Uloi would be uh, repulsive in some sense uh, to her. I think was the idea. So I think that's the same kind of situation here, where like the the members of these little trios who are kind of imprinting on the Uloi's will be like repelled by everyone else who's not in their little um, family group like Owen Carly yeah. family group yeah so I guess I guess that's that yeah I guess that's it uh but then where this is where it gets saucy um because suddenly Nikanj <laughs> wraps its arm around her wrist and prompting her to consider the third possibility uh although she doesn't say anything she suddenly feels that eagerness, I would say, in vert commas, growing her. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's this This is like, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Um, and then, you know, that sort of startles Lilith and she shouts to let her go in response, which obviously, you know, makes Nikan to release her. But did you do it? Did you inject anything? And, he was, and it goes, nothing. Uh, it wrapped its sensory, free, sensory around her neck. Oh, but I will inject something. We can go out later. Are you little rascal? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so she, she like initially thinks when that when it grabs her wrist that it's like given her a you know, an injection of something which is causing the sensation, but turns out not. So and I think that's probably more disconcerting. Yeah, it's like stimulating her body. It's like, but then it's like it's really funny because in the book it goes like, and then he just takes them by their neck, lifts them up, and holds them to the bedroom. Um, Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> while Joseph is like, "What? What's going on? What's happening?" And you know, it's like, "Yep, mm-hmm. round two, <laughs> fight." <laughs> Basically. <laughs> so yeah, poor poor Joseph is just kind of swept up in this again. Yeah, but yeah. this. 
Yeah, literally. literally. Uh, but with this time, though, once in the bedroom, Nikan goes to Joe and tells him that the second time will be the hardest um, because the first time it didn't really give Joseph any choice um, on the matter. Uh, to that, Joseph mm. responds by saying no, that he would prefer the real thing only with Lilith. Um, but, you know, Nikan refutes that it, the fact is that it's saying that it would Joseph would prefer with any human, you know, not an alien, um, even though it mm. pleased him so much. Illusion. Interpretation. Electrochemical stimulation of certain nerves, certain parts of your brain. What happened was real. Your body knows how real it was. Your interpretation were illusion. The sensations were entirely real. You, ha you can have them again. Or you can have all this. <laughs> it's like, mm. wow. You yep. can't... This is um, some high-level seduction, I would say, mm -hmm. sort of. Mm. Yeah, it certainly seems to be trying pretty hard to to um, get um, Joseph's willing involvement but here. But this is this is um, where I it sort of gets it explains it in a way because it sort of feels quite forceful, as you say. But like. Um, mm. But it, this is where it goes. Like the argument continues between them, but Nikan says that whatever they both feel, each will feel, you know, double sort of. They will feel each other's uh, emotions and you know whatever their body experiences. Mm. It won't hurt them. And uh, you know, Joseph argues that it's his choice, but his but Nikan is like actually his body is si but your body is si saying something else. And then Nikan just basically lifts Joseph onto the bed and just lies beside it and just nothing else, just lying down. And over time, everybody just sort of to like nods off to the sleep and then um, to the dreamland. And then, you know, after some time, Nikan just like just shakes Joseph up and he's like, what What did you do? You know, what did you drag me? He's like, the guy is like, nothing. And I just, you know, we just just relaxing. Eventually your body just relaxed, you know. Yeah, because I, I think... Um... Joseph was kind of, you know, held in Nikanja's like tentacles, and, and he was kind of in, like initially super tense, and then just he gradually relaxed so much that he actually fell asleep, and it was like I, I didn't fall asleep, yes, I wasn't yes. asleep, and then it, yeah, so it's uh, Nikanja's kind of slowly um, relaxing him. I guess it's more like you know the whole tension disappearing, and finally like. Just, hmm. you know, the whole situation, seeing so many on Kali, just Joseph likes, you know, goes off. And uh, Lilith, just while sitting there at the table watching them, just also starts to nod off because it's so quiet and, you know. Um, but this is where, you know, Joseph asking, why didn't you do it? Just do it. Uh, I told you the time you can, this time you can choose. I've chosen. You ignored me. But your body said one thing, your word said another. It moved sensory arm to the back of his neck, looping one coil loosely around the neck. This is the position. It said, I'll stop now if you like. And basically the chapter ends with Joseph finally, you know, like giving up to it because, you know, it's like saying no, but wanting it. Right? Yeah, it's it's kind of a, yeah, it leaves the whole thing very amb ambiguous because Joseph is like very explicitly saying, no, I'm not interested in this um but at the same time uh like just having heat as, for it's um, like no and stop yeah. no it's like and then we like but is like please more <laughs> yeah but it, it, he's definitely uh uh as nikan says bodily interested but uh not perhaps mentally so it's yeah it's, it's a difficult and interesting one because it seems like he, he may the curiosity is sort of i guess pushing him yeah he is he does seem to be interested but has this kind of intellectual resistance um, that he really doesn't want yeah. to to uh, to do it um like consciously but his uh it's, it's kind of unclear how much of that is driven by an actual kind of intellectual aversion to uh like you know having sex with um Lilith and mm -hmm. Nikanj and how much of it is just kind of the, the made by Nikanj like done basically stimulated by Nikanj and sort of like illusion of it yeah yeah but I think even internally like I think it feels like Joseph's kind of conflicted about what he wants to do here but uh, yeah I think just uh, Nikanj is definitely overstepping the bounds of 
consent. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, the whole like no means no is not being respected. No, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's not really not like he he's just more yeah. of like. Um, yeah, you can say no, but we all know, know what you want. Like, it's just sort of like this sort of type of seduction that um, sort of dominates yeah. you in a way uh, that, like, y- you're saying no, but then again, but the, at, at the end of the night, you're just sliding up a cigarette beside the other person and just like, yeah, this just <laughs> happened. Yeah, it's kind of sort of a uh, forcing Joseph to admit that he's uh, yes, interested. Yes, basically. It seems, yeah, uh, it, it, yeah, it's quite ambiguous as to how interested he really is. <laughs> I guess it's it's similar to the fact that like it's sort of like a drug dealer dealing with drugs. You know, like your your body is like really wanting this particular drug, and your mind is like, "It is mm. bad for you. You shouldn't be doing this," and yet you. Mm do it because your body just wins over right the f- physiological mm-hmm. the physical needs win over yeah yeah so the the distinction between like the the experiencing self and the uh, recollecting or reflecting self yeah. right you're, you're um like in the moment you might want to experience something that's pleasurable but the, when you look back on it's, it, it gives you it, what's the what's uh, the what's the word that describes it when you have like one night stand and then you just sort of the na- the next day you regret it. Um, oh god! Other than just regret and uh, remorse. I, uh, I don't no, there's know, like sort there's, of a modern yeah. w- uh, word describing it. it's like a, a, mo- a sort of a moral. You, you get sort of a moral <sighs> dis- like sort of regret. You get you know after that that you know like you, you enjoyed it that. Just, just the once one, you know, one night out, but like uh, the day after. Okay. I can't. No, think it's of the okay. Word. I can't remember yeah. as well. But it's, it's, it's yeah. just basically, um, yeah, like that. Just like you morally, like, mm. oh, I shouldn't have done it. I really shouldn't have mm. done it. But the the interesting thing though is because in in this case, like uh, Joseph is in a, very clearly like he he has that um, ability, right? He would subject himself to considerable, like discomfort uh he would be completely willing to like he wouldn't have the like this acrasia issue right he, he wouldn't you know intend to do one thing and end up doing the other in this circumstance uh the N- N- nikanj kind of establishes that he's like able to say no in the sense of like resist if it costs him yeah. something uh and and then proceeds to sort of force him to admit that he's uh, that he does want to participate. So he, there's a an interesting kind of uh, twist on it there because he kind of he first establishes that like and there's another one of those kind of Gomjibar Dune Star yeah, yeah. references, right? You, you, you've like you, you've demonstrated that you are willing to uh, experience pain in order to you know, avoid this uh, kind of trap. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's just it's 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 a weird situation, and to be honest, I I think for me it's really just re- you know as I mentioned earlier, uh, resembles like the drug addict in a drug dealer thing. Just like your body mm-hmm. needs it, wants it because it was fucking great, but your mind is like in the back of your mind is like this is not good, and you're saying no, and yet you take you know, you still grab the hand with the mm. so. And he kind of yeah, is a bad yeah. boy, I would say. He is a uh, hmm. is a bad boy. <laughs> no. it, it poses an interesting ethical challenge, actually. That the whole question of the the experiencing versus the kind of recollecting mm-hmm. self, because I which, which self do you kind of give primacy to, right? Um, do, do you like because in the moment experiencing pleasure. You know, like if you're doing a simple aggregation and like adding it up, mm-hmm. right? You know, you had an enjoyable experience for an extended period of time, but uh, then the recollecting self has biases in what they recall, right? So even if you have a really enjoyable experience for an extended period of time, if you have something unpleasant at the end, you're only going to remember the the end bit and maybe a smidgen of the enjoyable bit. So the recollecting self doesn't get much out of that when it reflects back on. I it. mean, I guess I mean in law. This is pretty cl- clarified that if you at the end you're like uh, no, then the whole situation is well this wasn't good so it's 
you know, I, you know, I'm uh, I'm relating this to like to rape cases, right? When like people were like mm. initially were happy, but at the end they say no, but yet things happen to them. Mm. At the end of the day, they st- they didn't really want it. So even though they they might have enjoyed it at the beginning, it doesn't mean matter at the end of the, the story. So I think it's the same here, right? This is if these books when they were, when these books were written in well, yeah, I think that that that, that, that um at this at the same time that that those are, those particular types of cases become like the the sort of controversial edge yes. cases, right? Because it is like if you if you gave every indication at the time. That you're perfectly okay with it, and then retrospectively change your mind about well, it. Well, that doesn't depend. really. I mean, yes. So afterwards, after the whole case, in this case, what you describe, yes, this mm. is a very uh, um, uh, an age case, right? Like when, as you said, controversial. I'm talking about the mm. cases, like in Joseph cases, where he wanted, Absolutely. he didn't want it, then he enjoyed it, but at the end of the day, he didn't want it, right? From the beginning, let's say. Yes, yeah. Like, there's a clear expression from him that he did beforehand that no, uh, he's so, not interested. So I think yeah, like if you wanted to illegally adjudicate this one, then yeah, I think uh, Nikanj would definitely get uh, guilty. Yeah, so that's why I think like this this case is um, is a bit different. Mm. But let's finish off the chapter because um, it basically ends with the final uh, with Lilith joining basically. Um, Joseph finally breaking and admitting that he enjoyed himself, and when the kind finally seduces him, Lilith slowly joins them. She sort of initially like she takes off her jacket and she looks at Nikanj and she sort of sees this grotesque alien being, uh, and she sort of like stands there paralyzed. But the moment Nikanj touches her, she sort of gives in and finally joins them. And this is where the chapter ends. Yeah, it's, it's a, an interesting one. It's a, 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 Lilith's. Uh, function in this whole role in this whole uh thing as well because she's now much more of a willing participant and is kind of like standing by whilst um Nikanj ropes joseph into all this but uh, you know she was also initially very much yes unwilling uh as a participant in this yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I think this whole chapter mm. is interesting because we finally see the overall this you know we see don Kali finally walking in there's some some seems to be a bit of paradox in their behavior in terms of like dealing with the problems but which could have been probably um dealt with from the very beginning you know Lilith didn't have to undergo this whole situation but then again maybe the whole idea Mm. was to make Lilith more trustworthy in the eyes of the humans so that they will actually follow her that you know all this time she was telling the truth so Mm. and Don Kali and the aliens exist so you know it's it's at the end of the day it doesn't matter uh, whether there are two groups, because at the end, Lilith's group is going to be the, the you know the one that matters. Um, dealing with the people mm-hmm. individually, you know, trying to help them overcome the different, you know, the strangeness of the aliens makes sense. And then at the end, you know, Nikan mm-hmm. finally, you know, uh, getting horny basically while the other on Kali are around them basically, <laughs> and just makes <laughs> Joseph to under you know experience this again and you know. But overall, I think it's finally, I'm happy that, you know, we see the Onkali moving in the Indian Association. Mm-hmm. So I want to, um, I'm just curious, so just wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of the, the characterization of the individuals in this mm-hmm. in this group. Because I say, how, how much do you care about what's going on with um, Gabriel and Tate and some of the others? Because there's not there's not very many individuals in this group whom you like with really strong sympathy for, right? A lot of them have some, especially on like the, the, the side of the group that were you know, with sort of Peter and, and, and Victor and, and now mm-hmm. Kurt and so on. It's a, a lot of them were not hugely sympathetic, but at the same time, they're in, not in a, not in a great situation that's likely to bring out the best in them. Um, I guess, I guess my uh, the thing is right. The problem with many books, right? The reason why in many fantasies, right, we have one or two protagonists, right, because it's hard for mm. people to focus on many characters. There are some authors out there mm. that try to um, sort of um, do it, and, like introduce many characters, and then you just sort of like 
uh, because it's more about the world surrounding them, not the character, individual mm. characters. It's like the themes behind those people mm. instead of the actual individuals. Um, but mm. like in this case, it's well, it was always about Lilith, right? Lilith and mm. initially I thought Shtaya, but actually no, it's Lilith and Nikanj. And the fact is that um, we are introduced to 43 other people. Hmm. It's impossible for us to sort of know, and the book even doesn't describe most of them. Like, we yeah, know maybe yeah. 15 to 20, maximum 20 of different individuals. The rest are basically nameless humans, right? Hmm. Um, we So for me, for example, the... As always, initially Tate and Garbia uh, were always the ones that I was like the close, the closest to Lilith, but the biggest unknown in the same mm. time because they were sort of playing yeah. both sides. But now, knowing this fact that you know, don't she was telling the truth, um, I think Tate will be you know fully behind Lilith, whereas Gabriel is like shit. Lilith was telling the truth about the whole trade and everything. He might actually not want to participate. Mm. And that's why, you know, Nikanj is like, he might actually commit suicide because he will not be want to be part of this, basically, genocide, I would say, of the species. On the mm. other hand, mm. this also yeah. might apply... Or, or perhaps a more personal... Uh, yes, yes, emotive. but it might also apply for the rest of the group. Like, you know, the initial the group that didn't believe uh, Lilith will become the group that uh, goes against Don Kali. Kurt, Victor, you know, mm-hmm. Peter, all of these, you know, all that group may actually... Someone may be like, oh, wow, okay, so she was telling truth. She wasn't crazy. And they'll just like, okay, um, yeah. this is not something that we are happy about, but hey... But the other will be like really unwilling about this, right? So I think this this will still okay. stay there. Um, mm. so we, we've got this this group of um, people who will sort of stubbornly double down on their resistance yeah. to the whole yeah, yeah. project. So um, yeah, to be like fair, to. if you know, we were always talking about how would we behave, and I always thought that oh, I would try to behave. The way, you know, like, you know, trying to watch and observe, like Joseph, right? See what's the situation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't know how I feel about the whole situation. You know, suddenly somebody is like forcefully trying to interbreed with me in a way that like, um, that I have no really choice about it, right? This is because at the end of the day, nobody has a choice about it. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. So some people... Mm -hmm. That's the the bind of the situation i think and that's that's kind of where lilith kind of sees that i think most clearly or and they, they've they've shown it to her most clearly right they've shown them shown her that, that they have kind of an overwhelming uh ability to do whatever they want with the humans so she's kind of i think resigned to the necessity of just sort of minimizing Casualties. the yeah damage that will be done by this process yeah but at the same time she then becomes kind of complicit in it because uh, yeah it, it's a really interesting more uh, she makes for a very interesting protagonist because she has this kind of uh like she she wants to do what is like the best thing but that ends up being it, uh, it will not know, sort of helping yeah, it out will not help it will not Kali. she can't yeah. really you know it's it's a thing that's gonna happen to her to them whether or not, and she's just basically mm. trying to minimize the damage and like what, you know, people getting hurt, right? She wants to minimize this. Mm. And I think this is this whole situation, like, uh, it's pretty interesting moral dilemma that would be interesting to discuss mm. because uh, overall, I think not, not just like, because um, this obviously is like a reference to all the colonization and everything that happened, you know, just the forceful, you know, yeah, yeah. look at the American, Native Americans, you know, and stuff like that. So it's 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 obvious that things like this um, are reference to this. And and the author puts hmm. it in a way, but puts it for us in an easier way because this is like a completely alien being, right? Whereas in here we yeah, had, yeah. you know, in our world, we had humans doing the same thing to humans. So... Yeah, I said it, I think it it does a, a great job of kind of capturing some of the the moral ambiguities of colonialists, uh, like um, 
what's the phrase and that's of taking over and integrating a, mm-hmm. another culture but, but the thing is it's this yeah. book is very gray i would say no it's not black and white it doesn't um mm. it doesn't yeah. just go oh, this is you know bad this is good uh this is more like balancing mm. on the edge because like each of the individuals for the most part i mean there's a couple of minor exceptions but basically all of the key individuals their their primary motivation is just you know they want to do good right they're, they're not they don't have a strong like they're not you know must mustachedly twirling evil yes, characters yes. trying to hurt people but they the the Owen Kali individuals who we have like Nakanj and, and Shdaya and, and and the rest of that group you know they want to do what mm-hmm. they do right they what they 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 have this kind of biological imperative to do this this kind of uh, colonizing of the new species, the, the the integrating of the new species into their culture and and biology. Uh, you know, I wonder, um, I wonder if there was any other any other species that ever sort of like rebelled against the sort of the um, Don Kali trying to integrate with them, trade with them. I wonder if in the history of mm. Kali there was a species that was advanced enough to actually fight back and sort of refuse yeah. that trade. And I wonder what, what was the end situation, what was the end result of... Yes, that would be an, an interesting encounter, right? Because the, you know, so far, we've only seen them in a situation where they are Completely just overwhelming every... massively asymmetrically yes. advantaged. Yeah. Which I suppose is in many ways like what um, I don't know, the the European powers coming out to uh, you know, with a technological superiority edge to the rest of the world. You know, there's kind of a uh, an analogous situation there. You know, although they like in the the real world colonization example, they lack kind of this this bi- biological imperative to uh, you know, internalize yeah. this new group. Um, I suppose it's more of a economic one yeah. in that case. No, I just it just feels but, to me yeah. this is like it's bound. I, I bet there's something like um, in in the future that something will like this, like the sort of unhappiness related to the fact that you know this 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 trade is going to happen and people not being hmm. you know not being happy about it. I, I'm I'm really you know. In my in many brief, uh, pr- uh, previous episodes, I've mentioned it, and I think eventually one of those books is going to be basically like a civil war for, um, between the humans that have tried to uh, started to as- the people yeah, who are assimilate this. it to yeah. Don Kali and the group of people who just basically reject the whole situation and try to make like this, you know, a civilization of humans that are not modified, not related to Don Kali in any way. Mm-hmm. And I just wonder how Don Kali will relate okay. to, uh, yeah. I know, response to that. But, you know, let's see. Yeah, I just, there's one more thought that I had, because this is this the conversation has reminded me very strongly of another excellent book that I just want to mention here, because um, The Traitor Baru Cormoran, which I may or may not have mentioned on the podcast before, is another kind of uh, a spectacularly morally grey protagonist that explores a bunch of themes around kind of... Uh, uh, colonization i think you definitely mentioned it to me but i don't know if we uh, mentioned it on the podcast yeah no i just thought i'd uh, put that in there because if you're interested in these themes then uh, that's another one that's worth a read uh, what's the so again what's the title and the author the traitor baru cormoran by okay. seth dickinson we can absolutely link it. so yeah so maybe let's go to my chapter 13 prediction Yes. So I I know that this chapter is very short, like half a page basically. So I think, based on the, just that's the only thing I know. So I think what's the what it might describe is either the aftermath of the like the what the Uloi are doing, right? Like the whole sort of description of all the aftermath of what Joseph and Lilith experienced, basically. Mm. And okay, yep, and it's. Uh... It's kind of a tricky one because it's a small target. To yeah, it's, it's very, and I think if I if I can, chapter fourteen sort of probably will go because this is the last chapter of the section. This is where sort of mm-hmm. maybe we'll get to you know the finally like 
something may happen or you know, somebody like the, the group the peter's group might do actually something you know, like after the drugs wear off because eventually they will i guess the onkali will stop giving them the drugs presumably yeah uh, once they put them yeah in the <laughs> either either before the jungle after the jungle something might happen you know like mm. the um you know people trying to somebody's trying to do something but like i guess eventually there there will be the this is yeah the final chapters were going to be like probably them finally moving to the jungle mm-hmm. okay yeah we'll, we'll be doing 13 yes, and 14 yes. next week because uh, as we said 13 short and 14 uh, just about long enough so we'll, we'll finish up this section and then uh the next time we'll be uh on to uh and the next time and the next time four. will be cyberpunk 2077 coming out so yeah. uh i'm excited for the game <laughs> to finally come out after i don't know how many delays I've not been following. That, no, so. it's 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 it was supposed to come out in November and then middle of November and like uh, they had to postpone it again because the ports for the um, consoles was not ready. So, but hopefully. Ah right. Okay. No. Yeah. So that's a uh, yes. enough of a tangent. <laughs> again. <laughs> Okay, I think. Uh, I think yeah, that I up. think. You no, know, thank you very everyone for listening. Uh, we are Xenothesis. You can find all the areas we places we um, upload this these episodes on xenothesis.com. I was Michael Glinka. I was Richard Acton. Bye. Goodbye.